measures of leverage this is a short reading in which we talk about leverage business risk and financial risk leverage is the use of fixed costs in a company's cost structure if a company has high fixed costs then we say it has high leverage leverage has two components operating leverage and financial leverage if a company has high operating fixed costs in other words high amount of property plant and equipment then we say that the company has high operating leverage if a company has high financial costs because it has taken a lot of debt then we say that the company has high financial leverage for highly leveraged firms a small change in sales will have a big impact on earnings i want to make a small clarification here in general throughout the cfa level 1 course when we talk about leverage we are generally referring to financial leverage but in this reading we are taking a broader look at leverage and when we say leverage in this reading we mean both operating leverage and financial leverage to understand the concept of leverage let's consider two companies hl which stands for high leverage and ll which stands for low leverage they have the same revenue and net income but a different cost structure the cost structure and operating performance is shown over here the income statement is on the right look at these numbers carefully and identify how the cost structure is different here is what you shall notice the fixed operating costs for high leverage firm hl are much more than the fixed operating costs for ll and the financing costs are also two times larger than ll so clearly we can say that this firm has higher leverage at this level of sales 100 units it turns out that the revenue is the same and the net income is the same but i want you to do a little experiment before you go to the next slide what if the sales numbers are higher if each company sold 120 units then how will the income statement be impacted then what will happen if the sales number is only 80 so come up with the income statement under these scenarios here is roughly what you should come up with this blue line represents the net income for different number of units sold for the high leverage company this intercept over here is going to be minus 60 because this point represents zero sales if there are zero sales then the net income is minus 60 because of these two numbers but as sales increase the net income increases at a relatively high rate the black line represents the low leverage firm if there are no sales then the loss is only 20 as sales increase the net income increases but at a lower rate this point represents the sales at which the net income is the same for both companies but notice as sales increase beyond 100 the benefit is much more to hl and that is another way of saying that hl has higher leverage a 1% increase in sales will have a higher percent increase in net income for the high leverage firm relative to the low leverage firm leverage increases volatility of a company's earnings and cash flows and also increases the risk of lending or owning a company you are now taking a analyst perspective when you are evaluating a company and you want to determine the level of risk one of the most important things to look at is the degree of leverage clearly the high leverage firm is more risky because if sales are high then net income increases a lot but if sales are lower than expected 
then the losses will be much greater for the high leverage firm. So clearly, high leverage implies higher risk. Higher risk would imply that we use a higher discount rate when we do valuation. So all else equal, the high risk has a negative impact on valuation. Coming now to business risk and financial risk. Within business risk, we have sales risk and operating risk. Sales risk deals with the variability in profits due to uncertainty of sales price and volume. Operating risk is the risk due to the operating cost structure. If a company has high fixed costs, then we say that the operating risk is high. As I just mentioned, sales risk and operating risk collectively are referred to as business risk. Financial risk is the risk due to debt financing. If a company has a lot of debt financing, then that means the company has to make large interest payments and the financial risk is high. Now we will talk about how to measure risk and we will start with operating risk. We measure operating risk using degree of operating leverage or DOL. This is a quantitative measure of operating risk. Degree of operating leverage is equal to the percentage change in operating income divided by percentage change in sales. If you have a situation where a 1% change in sales causes a 3% change in operating income, then the degree of operating leverage is 3. If for another company, a 1% change in sales causes a 5% change in operating income, then this company has a degree of operating leverage of 5. Clearly, a higher number implies a higher degree of operating leverage. The curriculum shows us how degree of operating leverage can be written as follows. Degree of operating leverage is equal to the quantity or the number of units sold into the contribution margin, which is the price minus the variable cost, divided by Q into the contribution minus the fixed operating costs. You don't need to understand the derivation, but you definitely need to memorize this formula and you need to understand and remember this interpretation for degree of operating leverage. Just to make sure you know how to do this, I want you to compute the degree of operating leverage for the HL company and the LL company. Here is what you should come up with and as you would expect the number for the high leverage firm is larger than the number for the low leverage firm. Now I want you to do example one from the curriculum which illustrates this concept. Financial risk. Degree of financial leverage or DFL is a quantitative measure of financial risk. Degree of financial leverage is the percentage change in net income divided by the percentage change in operating income. If a given company has a 1% change in operating income and this creates a 2% change in net income, then we say that the company has a degree of financial leverage equal to 2. The formula that you need to remember is given right here. Degree of financial leverage is quantity sold into the margin P minus variable cost minus the fixed operating costs divided by quantity into margin minus the fixed operating cost minus the fixed financial cost. The C stands for financial cost. Here again, I want you to compute the DFL for both companies. These are the numbers you should get. Notice again that the DFL for the high leverage firm is higher. And to consolidate this concept, do example two from the curriculum.
Now we will consider the effect of financial leverage on net income and return on equity. Remember, return on equity is equal to net income divided by equity. High leverage leads to higher ROE volatility. Volatility refers to the changes in ROE. And high leverage also potentially leads to higher ROE levels. And we'll understand why we use the term potentially. Let us consider an example. Say you have two companies, company A and company B. Company A is 100% financed by equity. So equity is 200 and assets are 200. There is no debt. For simplicity, we'll say that there are no taxes. Company B, however, is financed by both equity and debt, 50% equity and 50% debt. On the debt, the company pays an interest of 10%. What this table simply shows is for both companies. On the left, we have company A and on the right, we have company B. So for both companies, we have a given EBIT. This EBIT is the same for both companies. And we are computing the net income for both companies and the ROE for both companies. The EBIT is the same, but net income will not be the same because company A does not have interest. So net income is the same as EBIT. But with company B, there is debt. So there is interest income and net income will obviously be lower. The ROE is the net income divided by equity. For company A, we are going to divide net income by the equity, which is 200. For company B, we are going to divide net income by a much lower equity number of 100. So because the equity number is lower, that in general is going to have a positive impact on ROE. That is why you notice that for relatively high EBIT numbers, the ROE for company B is more than the ROE for company A. However, if the EBIT numbers are very low, let's say zero or close to zero, then notice what happens. For company A, the net income is zero and ROE is zero, but company B still needs to make interest payments. The interest payment is 10, so the net income is minus 10 if the operating income is zero and the ROE is negative. This demonstrates the fact that high leverage firms are more risky. And you can also look at the range of ROE, which is one measure of riskiness. ROE for these numbers ranges between minus 10% and 70. So that's a 80% range. Whereas for company A, the range is only half of that from zero to 40 percent. So this should make sense now. High leverage leads to high ROE volatility and potentially higher ROE levels. The potentially higher means that when you have high operating income, then you have higher ROE levels. For low operating income, you can actually have lower ROE levels. Total leverage. Degree of total leverage combines degree of operating leverage and degree of financial leverage. Degree of total leverage is the percentage change in net income divided by percentage change in sales. It can be shown that the degree of total leverage is simply the product of degree of operating leverage and degree of financial leverage. And the formula is given right here. The numerator is Q into P minus V. And the denominator is Q into P minus V minus the total cost, both operating and financial. Just to make sure you understand this, I want you to now compute the DTL for both companies. Here are the numbers you should get. And notice that for the high leverage firm, we come up with four using this formula. And if you also multiply the degree of operating leverage with the degree of financial leverage, you get four. 
low leverage firm has a degree of total leverage equal to 2 and you could also arrive at this number by multiplying the degree of operating leverage with the degree of financial leverage. Now I want you to do example 4 from the curriculum. Break-even points and operating break-even points. Break-even point is the point where the number of units sold is such that the net income is equal to zero. Generally, this point is referred to as QBE for break-even quantity. This is equal to the total cost, which is your fixed operating cost plus the fixed financial cost divided by the contribution margin, which is the sales price minus the variable cost. The operating break-even point is the point where EBIT or operating profit is zero. This is given by the fixed operating cost divided by the contribution margin. This is a very simple concept, but just to make sure you practice this and understand this, I want you to calculate the break-even points for both companies as well as the operating break-even points. Here are the numbers that you should get. And now I want you to do example five from the curriculum. That brings us to the end of this relatively short and simple reading. I will summarize the most important points. Degree of operating leverage is the percentage change in operating income divided by percentage change in sales. And here is the formula. Degree of financial leverage is the percentage change in net income divided by percentage change in operating income. And here is the formula. Just to help you remember this, notice that in the numerator, we are subtracting the fixed operating cost. And then in the denominator, we are subtracting the total cost. Degree of total leverage is the percentage change in net income divided by percentage change in sales. And the formula is given right here. The numerator is the same as the numerator for DOL. And the denominator is the same as the denominator for DFL. Notice that when you multiply DOL with DFL, you are going to get the degree of total leverage. As we have discussed, high financial leverage leads to high ROE volatility and potentially higher ROE levels. Another point I want to highlight here is the following. If you consider a very simple income statement, you have revenue and then you have operating costs, then you have financial costs such as interest and finally you come up with net income. Degree of operating leverage is showing the relationship between revenue and operating costs or you can think of it as follows. Degree of operating leverage is showing the relationship between revenue and operating income, where operating income is revenue minus operating costs. Degree of financial leverage is showing the relationship between operating income and net income, which obviously is based on financial costs. Then the formulas for the break-even point and the operating break-even point are given right here. My contention is that this slide illustrates all that you really need to know for this particular reading. So when you are revising, just make sure that you are on top of all the formulas and the information shown on this slide. As always, read the summary, review the learning objectives. The examples are good. That's why I have asked you to do all the examples in this reading. Do the practice problems from the curriculum and also try to do practice problems from other sources.